Greetings and welcome to Words About Games breakdown of EGX 2019 with Amy and Keith. One of us was at EGX 2019. Like, uh, this is the general introduction to all of the EGX videos <laughs> um, that we're going to be putting out over the course of the next week. So you're gonna, if you watch all the videos, you'll see this like ten times. Just <laughs> I didn't want to get off track in the beginning, but hey, it's us. I was at EGX. Keith wasn't. I played a ton of games. Keith doesn't know anything about any of them because we haven't seen each other since I got back from London. So we're going to talk about them. All of them. It's separated into categories that make sense if you're at the show and probably make sense. I hope they make sense. Uh, if if you weren't at the show, it, either way, thumbs up. Um, I also I have seven games of the show and I made this. So I'm going to be giving these out as we do the as we do the podcast, so keep an eye out for my seven best games of EGX with the little hearts and stuff. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to future Keith and future Amy, who are going to be having lots of conversations about video games. Over to you, future me. On the Sunday afternoon, I did Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> And then I was like, I was waiting for Cyberpunk and Death Stranding, and I was like, I'm gonna wander around this, this, the tiny games. So, in EGX, there's the Left Field Collection, which is the weirdest, quirkiest indie games, like the tiny, like the the super strange mm -hmm. stuff. There's also Transfuser, which is student projects, like that have been selected from a bunch of student projects to be shown at the EGX, you know, to, to boost their image not to boost their profile and the uk games fund had their own stand which was like these are were games from developers who were seeking funding um for games and it's like the stage five i think they're at so like a but like some of these games will get uk games fund funding um these were all funded to make demos um anyway i've put all those together because the there's not a lot I can really say about some of these experiences because they were as cool as they were. They were also really small, really quirky, really short. And the first one I want to talk about is a game that blew my fucking mind wide open. And it's called Eloquence. Something we don't have a lot of on these podcasts. Eloquence is... Not Elephant. Not Elephants. So Eloquence was a demo. There was two screens. It's a puzzle game. And you are in this world... And you do not speak the language in this world. So you have to try and like progress from screen to screen to screen. And um like you have to figure out what people are saying. Like so essentially it's like you go to one person and they've essentially got a quest for you. Or like something they need you to do. And they tell you what that is in the language of this game, which is like pictographical. I think that's the right word. I think that's a word. But it's like pictures. Um, and then, like, someone else on this screen can do the thing that that person wants, wants, you, wants done. The trick is you have to figure out how to find out what that person wants and find out how to ask for it. So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to learn the language. You do this by... So when you walk up to a person, they'll say something. You can take that speech bubble and drag it in your in, in your inventory at the bottom of the screen. You can then say that back to somebody else. Like so you don't know what it means. Like if, like hello, I believe I believe some version of hello is the first thing you learn. And then like you can say that back to somebody else and then like you saying something might prompt them to say something else which then you can then drag in your inventory. And what what blew my mind about the game was I started off going to every single character and just saying everything. So I just throw everything at them to like collect as much of this language as possible. And that kind of got me through the first screen. Like, just like throwing it all at the wall to see what sticks. And then I got to the second screen. And like it was the same such setup. There was people in this world you had to figure out what they wanted and how you could get them what they wanted. But I started figuring out what they were saying <laughs> like from contextual clues in the world like i figured out you need you need you want someone to build a bridge okay like i get that okay like i need to figure out who can build a bridge and then i was like talking to other people and instead of 
throwing everything at all of the NPCs until mm-hmm. something worked. It was like, no, actually, if I use this, like, this is this is the thing for I need a bridge. So then, like, you can see the person who said, I can build a bridge. They're two very similar, like, word, like, sentences. So you mm-hmm. can kind of figure out, like, how they fit together. And my fucking, like, by the end of it, I was literally... I was moving the stuff around, like, in one go, like, yes, I need to say this to that person. Okay, now that person has said this. Okay, now I need this for... The... And it was like... And I, my, I was sat there, the developer was next to me, and I was just like, the demo finished, the thanks for playing thing came up, and I was just like... He went, he went oh, did you enjoy it? And I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, I was, like, speechless, ironically. <laughs> like, it's a very simple game, but it was like... It was so oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. It was so cool to be like, I understood I understood the conversation I was having. And it never translated it for me. Like, if you get something right, it doesn't go, hey, these are the words. It's just... But I was like, I'm, I'm learning, like, bits and pieces of how to talk to it. And just, yeah, here, yeah, look. I mean, it, just that. <laughs> it, I mean, it gets one of those. It was one of the best experiences I had at EGX. And it was in the left field tunnel. Like, I just sat down at this weird-looking game, and I was like, this pictogram is okay, this is... And it just, by the end... <laughs> my brain was somewhere on the back wall. <clears throat> um, what else did I play? Across the Grooves was also in the left field collection. An interactive graphic novel. The art style, as you might imagine for a graphic novel, was incredible. The story was really gripping. I actually stopped playing it because I was like, I'm going really deep into this. Like, every time a scene ended, I was like, okay, it's going to end the demo now. Nope, another scene. And eventually I was like, okay, I don't want to know anything more about this game. Um, It's got to do with, like, time travel and, and, like, someone sends you a record, you can listen to the record... And bearing in mind there's been very little sound in the game up until this point, and then she puts the record on, and the music comes through the headphones, but you can choose the lyrics as, like, by, like, so, so like, it's sync, like, because the whole thing is, like, not voice acted, so you're clicking through the dialogue, and then the song starts, and the lyrics, it's being sung, which I didn't expect. And then it was like, you can choose where the song goes and the, the lyrics of the song as you're going through it and then you get transported back in time and time travel, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey shenanigans happen. And I very much want to know what happens next. <laughs> Which I guess is a good sign. Um, I also played Skatebird. You remember Skatebird? <laughs> we all remember Skatebird. I <laughs> guess I got to play Skatebird. Um, it's a skate. It's skateboard. It's a skateboarding bird, and it's like attracting a lot of a lot of younger people because it's a skateboard. Um, what was funny was at one point when I was walking through the left field tunnel, I saw a bunch of actual like skater people, like with like dressed how you would imagine like skater people yeah. be dressed, all like standing around this these two skateboard machines, like playing skateboard, and I was like. <laughs> it was a lot of fun um, to be a skateboard. Um, what else was there? Hypochondronomicon <laughs> is a fusion of the word hypochondria and necronomicon, <laughs> as I was as I had explained to me, and it's a turn based RPG where you go and dungeon diving. And you have different character classes. And the, um, like, so you put, like, you've got a certain amount of points you can spend on moves. And so does your enemy. And, like, you go sequentially. So if you imagine on the screen, you've got your character and the enemy character on the screen, like, side by side. And then there's four boxes on either side numbered. One, two, three, four, five. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, you, and that's the order in which actions happen. And we've got to do is it's almost like a puzzle, 
action RPG game where you've got to try and put your moves in in an order that will defeat the enemy like in the best possible way because like you don't heal between encounters so you've got to try and make it through the entire thing without dying um so like you've, you've got a stun move and there's the enemy is gonna use a move that's gonna double their damage on all their attacks going forward if you put the stun move to happen before that happens it won't happen and then it it's stuff like that it was really it was really basic but really really like it was really interesting like as an idea for a combat thing to be able to see to be able to like plan out you're not just planning out one turn of a of a of rpg combat you're planning out like essentially eight like you can see the four turns that the enemy is going to do and you, you have to kind of respond to that and then you just set it in motion and it all just goes like it just repeats <laughs> like until someone's dead um hopefully not you but um it was really really interesting um, and the Glass Ceiling games was had a really awesome soundtrack. You, it was just an AR game on your phone, and you just fired um, a slingshot. So it was just stood in the middle of the, in the middle of the UK Games Fun section <laughs> with a phone in my hand and Beats headphones on, just like firing. A, I was I was I was destroying the glass ceiling, which, as it turns out, was just a bunch of you know misogynistic crap it was it was awesome like that you got the business i got the business card off of them and they were like they were inspired by like riot girls so <laughs> like in their gameplay design but um the soundtrack was really good and i was rocking out in the middle of the in the middle of egx <clears throat> as i do i'm not surprised i mean there's always got to be one game where i'm like yes music awesome um, yeah, that's it. That's going to do it for EGX 2019. Like I said, that's not everything I played. I might tweet about some of the other games I played, but like 240 characters in a video isn't really, <laughs> it isn't very many words, surprisingly enough. Um, and I don't want to just say things for the sake of saying things. Those were my thoughts, and I can now... I had I had the scissors ready for the end of this podcast because I can now finally cut this off. <laughs> Don't cut your wrist. Ah! <laughs> I actually can't. These scissors are too blunt. <laughs> yeah, that um, used to be cutting nails because it looks like it's the same manicure set that I got given for Christmas many many moons ago. Yeah, but I just want I don't want to cut myself. I just want to cut the super pass off. Do you know how hard it is to get these things off? No. <laughs> I've only ever had the word the hospital ones just come off quite easily. Yeah, these don't. The cyberpunk one did. I was going to have the cyberpunk one on, mm-hmm. but... <sighs> I'll, I'll add it to the collection. Freedom! I'm free! Until next year. I'll add it to the collection. That I've got, have been making since 2013. You just end up having a necklace of them. I could probably make. On my trophies. I could probably make a necklace of them. I've certainly got enough. That was Amy's right. Ry- Amy's round. Amy's roundup <laughs> of her experiences at EGX. Um, if you want to learn more about Amy's experiences at EGX, then I would recommend that you look on her Twitter. She's at Trouble uh, which one you'll see some many wonderful images, including some food items, some of dubious repute. They were all of dubious repute, let's be fair. <laughs> but yeah, there's also <laughs> like some vague commentary in there, and um, hope you enjoyed. Bye, me!